Hi folks, this is Nat, and this is your video lesson on multiplying decimals. Let me start by saying for the purposes of this lesson, I'm going to assume that you already have a good handle on multiplying whole numbers, that you either can use lattice method or the traditional algorithm for multiplying to multiply, you know, large whole numbers. If that's not the case, that's okay. Um, I will end this lesson after the practice problems with a quick explanation of both lattice method and traditional multiplication for you. Um, but for the main lesson, we're going to be focusing on what you do when you have decimals. So the first thing to kind of think about is, unlike addition and subtraction, when you're multiplying decimals, you don't have to line up the decimals. You're just going to actually treat these numbers as though they don't have decimals. So when I look at 2 and 6 tenths times 3 and 2 tenths, I'm actually going to treat this as 26 times 32, because the decimals really don't matter until the very end of the problem. I'm going to just go ahead and use whatever method I am comfortable with to solve this simple problem, 26 times 32. I'll do two demonstrations, and in this case, I'm going to start with your traditional algorithm. So I'm just going to say 32 times 26. It doesn't matter what order multiplication comes in, so I could have done it either way. Um, 6 times 2 is 12, carry the 1. 6 times 3 is 18, plus 1 is 19. I'm going to make sure I remember my placeholding 0 down here. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 3 is 6, and then I finish up by adding it. 2 and 0, 9 and 4, 1, 1 and 6, so 832. So 26 times 32 is 832. The very last thing, and this is true no matter what method I use, that I have to do, and this is the only thing that makes decimal multiplication different than regular multiplication with whole numbers, is I need to go back and count the number of decimal places. In this case, my first number, 2 and 6 tenths, has a tenths place. That's a decimal place. My second number, 3 and 2 tenths, has a tenths place. That's a decimal place. So total, I have two decimal places. Knowing that is important because the answer to a multiplication problem will always have exactly the number of decimal places as there were in the problem. So there were two decimal places in the problem. I need two decimal places in the answer. So I will count from the right, one, two, and place my decimal so that there are two decimal places. So final answer here, eight, and 32 hundredths. The big thing to note is that number of decimal places in the problem, in this case 2, corresponds to the number of decimal places in the answer. And that's the only difference. We'll talk about why that is in just a second, but um, for right now we're going to do one more example. This time I'll use lattice method. So here we have 2 and 63 hundredths times 8 and 1 tenth. Um, again, I'm going to treat this as though it's just 263 times 81, completely ignoring the decimal to start with. If I wanted, I could think about how many decimal places there are before I did the problem, but it doesn't really do me any good until I have an answer. So we'll do this one with lattice method. Now, while we do this, I want to stress that it's really important that you not try to do a bunch of different multiplication strategies by hand. Pick the one that you like the best and just stick to that one. If you already know and feel comfortable with traditional uh, multiplication, now is really not the time to learn lattice. We want to just stick to one thing and get good at it. So I'm going through and I'm doing all my multiplication. I actually like lattice for big numbers for this reason. I get to do one thing at a time. Um, but then I go through and I add them all up. And if you are familiar with lattice multiplication, this will seem pretty familiar to you. And done. So the answer to this problem is 21,303. Now, if you were paying attention before, regardless of how you did this, 
you need to think to yourself, well, I, I need some decimals here. And the number of decimals will be the same as the number that was in the problem. So my first number, 2 and 63 hundredths, has a tenths place and a hundredths place. That's two places. My next number has just a tenths place. That's one place in the decimal. And that's a grand total of three decimal places, meaning that my answer should also have three decimal places. So I'll start counting from the right. One, two, three, and I'll place my decimal. So my real answer here is 21 and 303 thousandths. If you're feeling inquisitive about this, uh, you might actually wonder, wonder to yourself, well, why does this even work? Why can I just count the number of decimals in the problem and that's the number in the answer? Um, well, let's look at why. If I do the problem 3 and 4 tenths times 8 and 1 tenth and I ignore the decimals and treat it as 34 times 81, it is the exact same problem except that 34 is 10 times larger than 3 and 4 tenths. And 81 is 10 times larger in this case than 81. So collectively, 34 times 81 is going to be 100 times bigger than 3 and 4 tenths and 8 and 1 tenth. And what that means is that if the answer to 34 times 81 is 2,754, that is 100 times bigger than the answer that I'm really looking for. Um, so what we do is we make it 100 times smaller. So we reduce that answer by 100 times to get back to the answer we should have had originally. So we get to ignore the decimals because we're going to come back at the end and correct that answer the number of times bigger or smaller that it uh, actually should have been. The other thing that you might come up against and wonder, well, what do I do, is a problem like this. Let's say that I had 0 and 2 hundredths times 0 and, I don't know, 13 hundredths. I'm going to multiply these together again. I get to ignore the decimal, so I can kind of just treat this as 2 times 13, which if I'm good with my mental math, I'm going to remember is 26. So I know I've got this answer 26. Now I need to adjust for my decimals like we were just talking about. This first one has two decimal places. The second one has two decimal places. So we have a combination of four decimals that need to be added in. Um, and you're going to notice we don't have that many digits. This confuses people sometimes. So in this scenario, we just do the same thing. We just keep counting from the right. So I say my first one is 1, 2. I'm going to keep going 3, 4 places, and then place my decimal. The only thing that I have to remember is to add some zeros as placeholders. So when I do this problem, I'm going to say that the answer is 26 um, ten thousandths. So it isn't a huge correction that you need to make there. Um, you just have to know, same thing, add zeros as placeholders. The mistake people sometimes make is adding zero on the back end, but we don't do that. We add zeros in front of our digits. We count from the right to the left when adding decimal places. Like I said at the beginning of the video, now we're going to actually take a step back and talk about our two different multiplication methods that you might use. Um, if you already feel comfortable with this, please just skip this and go on to the end. Uh, you can find the practice problems at the end of the video. Um, if you're somebody who feels a little shaky on your multiplication, um, this is for you. The first refresher we're going to do is your standard algorithmic multiplication, and we'll talk about why this is our traditional method. So if I'm going to do 24 times 36, the first thing I'm going to do is just stack these things up, 24 times 36. And we have to know our multiplication facts to do this. Um, but other than that, there's not a whole lot to it. You're going to say, start with the ones place on the bottom number. 
So I'm going to be looking at this 6. I'm going to say 6 times 4. 6 times 4 is 24. And what I'll do is I'll write the 4 of the 24 down here, and I'm going to carry the 2 to the next place. Now I'm going to do 6 times 2, which is 12, and I'm going to add that carried 2 to it. 6 times 2 is 12, plus the 2 that I carried makes 14. I could carry the 1, but because I don't have anything else there, I actually just get to write it as 14. There's no hundreds place in this case. If there was, I would have to carry the 1. Now, this is the part that everybody forgets when they're doing traditional uh, multiplication. You need to add a 0 place as a placeholder before you start doing the same thing again on the 3. So my 0 is my placeholder because the 3 is not just a 3, it's actually a 30. It's in the tens place, so the 0 holds that tens place. 3 times 4, again, that's going to be 12. So I'm going to write my 2, and I'm going to carry my 1. Then I'll do 3 times 2, which is 6, and I'll add my carried 1 to that, so it's a 7. I finish up this by adding a straight down. 4 plus 0, 4 plus 2 is 6, and 1 plus 7, 864. Let's see what that exact same problem would look like using lattice method. For lattice method, I'm going to begin making a grid that is the size of my numbers. Um, I have a two-digit number times a two-digit number, so I'm going to make a two-by-two two grid, which is a square. And I'm going to write one number on top. I'll do the 24, and I'll write one number down the side. I'll do the 36. Um, the next thing I do is I draw horizontal lines not horizontal, diagonal lines down my grid, um, cutting every square in half. The nice thing here is that I get to just multiply all the things at once. There's no carrying involved. Um, 3 times 4 in this first grid here, in the uh, top right of my grid, is going to be 12. 4 times 6 is going to be 24. And you're going to see that I'm writing the tens place in the top left and the ones place in the bottom right. That always is the case. Now 2 times 3 in the top left here is going to be 6. 6 is the ones place. It still goes in the bottom right. I can write a 0 for the tens place or I can leave it blank. In this case I'll just leave it blank. And then I've got 2 times 6 on the bottom which is 12. So 1 on the top, 2 on the bottom. The diagonal lines are there so that I add across, down them. So I'm going to be going, I'll draw it in so you can see, I'm going to be going like this, adding the numbers that direction. So 4 is all by itself, it stays a 4. 2 plus 2 plus 2 makes a 6. 1 plus 6 plus 1 makes an 8. Again, I get 864 as my answer, which is the same. So both ways get us the same answer, provided we do them uh, correctly. Um, and for that reason, I don't really mind which one you do. Uh, my request is that you just pick one that you want to get good at, get good at it, stick to it. Um, they both work just great. It just depends on your preferences. That was a super fast explanation of both of those methods. Those are things that generally take a while to learn, so I'm hoping that this is just a refresher, not the first time you've seen them. Um, if you need extra help with this, please let me know. And here are your practice problems for the lesson. Um, multiply each of these together and uh, make sure you show your work. You must show your work to get credit for doing the homework. Um, other than that, uh, good luck.